Coming up this week on Kings, <clears throat> excuse me, wow, good, Kings of the Rings podcast. I was coughing from all that twerking going on at NXT Battleground. We're going to review Battleground and why the hell Shawn Michaels was in a chef's hat at the end of Battleground. And then we're going to move forward to the semi-interesting calamity that is Clash at the castle and who may or may not show up during that event so we're going to be cooking we're going to be going to a castle we're cooking a castle here on episode number 379 of kings of the rigs podcast exclusively on wrestle addict radio and it starts right now I've never been so choked up with emotion going into the show. You know, it's just kind of a weird time, but it happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the amount of woos going on when that occurs. Goodness gracious. Going to hear an entire nation say woo simultaneously. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 379, exclusively here on WrestleAttic Radio. We are streaming live right now on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Thank you guys for joining us. If you're list if you're if you like what you see, if you are listening to us a little bit later, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave us a five star review. The links to all of that are in the description below joining me this week unfortunately k cannot make it but i guess fortunately for me uh returning for the first time after getting joey chestnut banned from the hot dog eating contest will tarish it's to be fair in my defense i called joey personally on my banana phone uh -huh. and i was like joey don't take this deal it's not worth it i know they're nathan's and i know they're terrible but you don't even chew them or taste them anyway you just swallow <laughs> them so do not take this deal and and he didn't listen to me. He it's, just he was just like, "Hey, Will, fuck you," and he took it. <laughs> It, it, it's very unfortunate. It's also very unfortunate that Slack actually showed up for a show for once. This is actually kind of crazy. It's actually actually kind of crazy. Hey, Slack. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Let's see how long he stays, though. Yeah, Slack. This is how we remember you. You actually show up and do things every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he our intern <laughs> for a while? He was. He was. Yeah. And what happened to that? Uh, right? He didn't do anything. That's so we true. Fired him. <laughs> yeah, we replaced him with the. I fucking mean, to be fair, we also didn't delegate things for him to do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the, listen, we've had super Canadian fan. We've had frets. We even had a freaking stuffed animal do better job than Slack. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> and we never gave any of them directions. Yeah. And we had a Dave. We did have a Dave. Dave. We was had a just... wild Dave. Happy Happy belated birthday, Dave. By the way. Shout out to Dave. Yeah, shout out to Dave, man. Miss you, buddy. Uh, but yeah, no, this is going to be... Uh, K, K would be here, but K threw out their back. Literally. I don't know what happened. I don't ask questions. But Don't hopefully... ask questions you don't want the answer to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. That's where we're going to leave it at. So, uh, oh yeah, by the way, well, I did not I did not inform you. I kind of made it a, a, an executive decision. K is now has a new unofficial position within WrestleMania Radio and KOTR. Uh, K is now going to be our um, head of product enhancement, aka our hope. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I can fuck. I can fuck with that. Essentially, she, essentially, they're just my uh, my my consultant on designs because they have a better artistic eye than probably being oh, you yeah. combined. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should, they'll just be like, yeah, add more color here, and you know what? They'll be right. <laughs> yeah, they'll be completely right. They'll be completely yeah. right. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, uh, Kay has designed uh, for this year our our new line of Wrestle Attic Radio. Pride merge, as you can see below, if you are watching or if you're on any of our socials, it is our new uh, our 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 logo for for Pride Month uh, as it's going on. So this uh, logo is going is on currently on some T-shirts, uh, some tanks, uh, I think a, a a mug because K wanted a mug, and I was like, all right, <laughs> there you go, and also you a sticker. Make it the tip of a condom. That would, that would work. We can sell <laughs> condoms. <laughs> it, it stretches out for color. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! So it's like a candy cane. <laughs> <laughs> Although I could honestly, I can see it. Um, I, I yeah. def, like that color design would kind of work. Uh, but yeah, no. People will buy anything with the right logo on Seriously. it. Seriously, uh, I actually do like this logo. It's very awesome. It's very colorful. It really does encompass up everything on the pride flag for the most part. Um, this design, like I said, is currently on 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 our Wrestling Radio. Merchandise short shop, which is in the links in the description below of this video, or be audio in which you are listening to. The big thing about this is that uh, Kay and I discussed that uh, we want to make this not just a monthly thing like every other organization does. 
in the world around this time. So this is going to be the official Pride merch line in perpetuity on uh, on our store forever and ever until we decide to change it and come up with a new design. So we started out with some shirts and tanks and tees and everything, uh, but we are going to move when it comes to the winter time. You're going to see, you know, Pride themed uh, hoodies. Uh, jackets, things of that nature, whatever me and the uh, the Hope for War come up with. So this is going to be a consistent thing uh, with a new line of other war merch to be talked about probably next week, uh, to be completely honest with you. So I just wanted to plug that real quick and also thank Kay for his pretty awesome design that Kay was actually kind of designing when they were on the show uh, last week. We were talking about uh, Battleground and everything like that. Speaking of which... Who's in the chat? Anyone in the chat? Slack, are you there? Someone talk to me. It's very lonely. Hmm. I can hear you now. Right. Okay. What happened? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're good? Uh, yeah, I got you. All right, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Okay, you're yeah. good. Yeah, let me just mark the audio again. But I think we're still live. Yeah, so. we are still live. I'm just a little frozen as, right as now. As you are. As I am. As I am. Yes, we'll fix this hopefully a little bit. But yes, Battleground was this week. I'll it'll probably look at I'll probably look like that for a while unless I kind of redo my my uh. You want to go to a video. quick music break? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can play yeah. some BBL Drizzy. No, no, not even. I can go. I have the intermission slide ready. Yeah. Okay. Go to the intermission. Yeah, intermission slide. We'll be right back, folks. Sorry about that. Give us two seconds. We're just going to play it anyways. I love it. I can play Chris Jericho. <laughs>
After some technical difficulties, we are back. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, real quick, as you were saying, NXT Battleground. I guess they didn't want to talk to me. They just want me talking about uh, sexy red twerking. But NXT Battleground happened. And honestly, it was a pretty decent show. Well, did you watch any of it at all? No. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not a damn thing. Fair enough. We'll give you, I'll give you a quick recap of the event thus far. The women started off with the, uh, with the ladder match for the uh, no- Women's North American Championship. And honestly, really fucking good. Sol Ruka, I will say, well, your pick almost won it. Ah, of course. Have you seen Sol Ruka's finisher called the Soul Snatcher? I'm about to. Yeah, it's great. It's pretty much like an inverted RKO. It's the best way I can explain it. But uh, she, it was a, it was a creative match for a lot of for a lot of reasons. The women did a fantastic job and ended up going to Kalani Jordan, aka uh, Miss Carmelo Hayes, currently. Um, so she won in a match that seemed a little bit rushed, but it kind of worked out. A sleeper really good match after that were the Good Brothers versus Axiom and Nathan Fraser. You're looking at oh, the, that is a good finisher. Yeah, the Soul Snatcher. <laughs> yeah, she did up the top rope. Yeah, and then um, does she always do off the top rope? No, she usually does it off of she'll she'll pretty much like walk up any of the ropes. She did it up against the ladder during a uh, battleground. Oh, that's pretty. That's a good finisher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And she's doing that after she tore her ACL. God damn. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Kalani ended up winning. Uh, moving on to that, the the tag team match is actually a lot better than I thought. The Good Brothers ended up losing, unfortunately, in a very creative match for them. Uh, Oba Femi did what you think Oba Femi would do, is throw people around. Mm. <laughs> literally. Like, he picked up one of the Gallus boys, those thick guys, and he literally like picked him up in one foul swoop and just like threw him across the ring. Yeah, he does that because he's it, humongous. He's humongous. He's scary. He's scary. scary. <laughs> he's very, very scary. scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wesley ended up pretty much being the crash test dummy. And even after the match, Wesley got beat up. And now there are rumors. Wesley got beat up by Gals again. There now there are rumors that Wesley and his original running mates from the Rascals in TNA may be coming over sometime soon. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Including like, Zach Wentz, like who got this fired. I like crossover, though. Oh, I love a TNA crossover. I think it's such a good idea. It, I, I, yeah, it's it's perfect for them. Um, and they did a lot of great numbers. Uh, we did underground. Oh, we also had the NXT Underground match. Shayna Baszler, Lola Vice. Lola Vice ended up winning and twerked her way backstage with Sexy Red. It is a sight to see. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, moving on as well. Mia Yim also did a great job in the uh, in the ladder match. Moving on as well, we had what I thought was going to be the main event. Jordan Grace and Roxanne Perez was actually the um, the penultimate match because they shoehorned Trick Williams and Ethan Page for the NXT title at the last moment uh, on 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 the Tuesdays on Tuesday's NXT from last Tuesday. Uh, mm-hmm. But Jordan Grace and Roxanne Perez put on a great showing. It was looking very likely. That Jordan Grace, and I was thinking for a while, Jordan Grace is going to steal this title. I, th- I, th- I, that's why I predicted. I was like, I think you, you need a surprise. Yeah. Right. Like if you're going to try and, cause you, you can't have every TNA person lose. I don't know if they did, but they shouldn't. Yeah. And if you want to pick one, this is the one to do it. Cause she's, she was already in the rumble, right? Yeah. She was so in the rumble. She, yeah. She is, she is a stick. Like, look at her. She's fucking huge and terrifying. Yeah. And I think it would make sense. And they had uh, Roxanne Perez on the, the raw after mania. So they could have easily called her up to give Liv Morgan or, um, who's on, who's a champion on SmackDown, Bailey, someone to work with. Yeah. But they like, didn't I, think, I think that would have been very believable if they call her up and just start putting her in programs. Yeah, no, it would have been believable. But uh, the weirdest thing happened in that match. All of a sudden, shenanigans started in tune. So Tatum Paxley, who is the daughter of Victoria in real life, WWE Hall of Fame Victoria, or future Hall of Fame Victoria, who also was in TNA, comes out and then steals Jordan Grace's knockout title. Okay? Nice. As she's running back to she's running back up the uh, up the entranceway she gets stopped by a performer known as ash by elegance in tna you know her will as dana brooke <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> so the, the funniest part about it is vic joseph a lead announcer 
he's supposed he's supposed to be acting surprised that Ash by Elegance or Dana Brooks showed up, and he's like, "Oh my God, it's Dana! I mean, Ash by Elegance." <laughs> I was gonna say if if they called her Dana Brooke, like <laughs> <laughs> they they should have just called her Dana Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in true Dana Brooke fashion, she's in a tussle with the TNA Knockouts Championship with Tatum Paxley. Jordan Grace comes out, takes the title from Tatum Paxley, bashes Tatum Paxley in the head with the TNA Knockouts title, then looks at Dana Brooke and bashes her in the head <laughs> with the TNA Knockouts title. And then gets back in the ring, gets surprised by Roxy, and Roxy wins. The other interesting in that other interesting thing in that match is that Jordan Grace tore off her earlobe. Ah, uh-huh. she was wearing an earring. She was wearing like an earring in the ring. Uh huh. And somehow, the earring got stuck on the stockings of Roxanne Perez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's she people are like she's bleeding, and I was like, what the hell is on Roxanne Perez's thigh? And they're like, oh, it's an earring. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking that sucks. Yeah. Why would you wear jewelry in the ring? Like, are I don't you know. crazy? She's been doing it forever. She she tweeted. She's like, all right, that's the last time I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why would you fucking do that? Like, why? Did Ruben <laughs> Rusev was barefoot. What are you doing? <laughs> Riddle was barefoot for a while. Riddle was barefoot his whole career. Yeah, I know, but it's just like that's how you get hurt, dude. They're wearing boots. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Rusev screwed up his foot once, and he went to boots. Yeah, yeah, he was like, <laughs> like broke his foot. Yeah, and he was out for like six six months. Then he went to boots because he's not an idiot. <laughs> yeah, uh, the other thing that happened, obviously, the NXT uh, championship match between Trick Williams and Ethan Page. Ethan Page is full time NXT. This isn't a TNA crossover. He's out of his AEW contract. Um, he went full time. Ethan Page is good. Ethan Page is a good character. Like he knows I, his character. He, he did okay work in AEW. He was in that faction or that tag team for a while. I think he had yeah. to do with Darby. My problem with Ethan Page, I would just be like, dude, you you, you score pretty well in the Bret Hart test, but for <laughs> the love of God, stop yelling at me every single promo. <laughs> you are screaming like you have roid rage, and it's just you think being loud and yelling is mm-hmm. relatable. All what, the time. What I what I find very interesting about Ethan Page is that he he owns the rights to his name and his logos and all of that. So they Smart. they allowed him to bring that over with him. So it's the same thing what Styles did. He owned yeah. the rights to his name. So there's no he can't jump ship or anything. And you know this this may be another a sign of things to come. If Ethan Page is jumping over, there's rumors that Pentagon might be might be jumping ship as well. It's Once like, his oh, co- we can we can keep our we can make money off of our name. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> while making a good contract via you. So yeah. that, honestly, that is the one thing that beats Tony Khan. Yeah. Um, money up front. It's like Tony Khan will give you more money up front, but if you can, you can honestly could bet on yourself and get more merchandise rep like yeah. from WWE. And if WWE lets you do that. That is very enticing. If it they is. put that rocket strap rocket to you. Mm-hmm. You're gonna make way more merch, and since you own your name, you're gonna make way more money. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. It is. It's kind of crazy. Although uh, there was a low key shot that Ethan Page took last week when he was signing his official contract. He was like, "Listen, I don't have to be here." He goes, "I could be sit. I can do like I did the last couple of years, just s- sit on my ass and make a whole bunch of money." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what he did. <laughs> yeah, he made a lot of money in the back. Yeah, Solo was barefoot too. Good job, Charles. I did. I did. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. I think Solo wears boots now, but he, I was gonna say that. But he, he was originally, but he, he originally had barefoot. Taped. He had, he, yeah, he taped, he taped his ankles. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, that's kind of, yeah, don't go barefoot in a ring. That's just disgusting. <laughs> I like he's sanitary too. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they do change out the apron. And, like, have, couple... I forget. They changed the apron like every other match. Yeah, but still, I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't trust it. <laughs> I don't trust it. This is coming from a guy who used to walk barefoot in a football locker room, but that's just me. And that oh was my a young God. Kid. I was a kid. I didn't care. So. Yeah, I know. I, I understand. <laughs> it was, I would have done it too. <laughs> it was a weird time. I was like, I'm invincible. Nothing can hurt me. At all, surprisingly enough. Uh, but moving on from NXT Battleground into the other news that apparently is somewhat legit. Ricochet, uh, according to multiple outlets, Ricochet has given his notice and said that once his contract is up, he is not looking to renew or resign. Ricochet will be a free agent sometime by the end of the summer. Uh 
if you saw what happened on to him on Raw, that might have been their WWE's way of writing him off TV so he can ride out his contract. Uh, Will, before I before I get into the big question of, on everybody's mind about Ricochet, did you see what happened to him on Raw? I saw he got the stretcher job. You know how he got the stretcher job? Yeah, Braun, Braun Breaker like cut him in half. Well, he speared him multiple times. He beat him up in the parking lot. Uh, they gave him the Rey Mysterio spot where he lawn Oh, the lawn dart? The lawn dart. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. That's awesome. And then he went to like the stairs of a production truck and he power slammed him onto the windshield of a car. Gee, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's not re-signing. I, I was like, damn. I was like, okay, Rick. The first ever speed champion, Ricochet, who he dropped that title to Andrade the other, the other day on Twitter, which no one watched, um, is pretty much, that's probably his swan song that, that is, he is gone from, uh, from WWE. And poor Andrade, he just wants good booking. <laughs> yeah. Literally, the only thing Andrade <laughs> wants is to not be booked like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is crazy. But the biggest question on everybody's mind is Samantha Irvin staying, right? Duh. <laughs> what do you I mean? Really that's, not a, so. <laughs> that's not a question. That's the only thing that would make me think that Ricochet is staying. Like, why would you leave your wife for what? To do acrobats with Will Ospreay? Probably like, wants to do. <laughs> right? Like, you just want to do flips and shit? Like, is that, you just want to be like a, the fucking Cirque du Soleil in AEW? Like, okay. Yeah. Like, you're, you're going to have great matches. Like, you will. I mean, you might be booked better. You might not be. You're going to be booked at Forbidden Door. You know that. Yeah. Like you're gonna just you're not gonna have storylines there either. Yeah, I mean if you look, look at Andrade. Yeah. Osprey's <laughs> his real boyfriend. Look, 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 look at everyone from the WWE mid card who goes to AEW. They either stay in the mid card or they just stay in the undercard. Yeah. Alistair Black. Keith Lee. Keith Lee. I mean, Ember Moon. Sick. Ember Moon. Yeah. Ruby Riot. Yeah. Adam Cole. Baby. Um, the Adam old, Cole, all of all of on the street of go <laughs> Fish, Fish and O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Buddy Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. We, let, let's. You're you're absolutely correct. Yeah, How, yeah, at least with Triple H here, you have a chance. Hell, I'll even Although, put Diana Perazzo in that mix. Huh? Diana Perazzo. Was she in AEW? And she's in AEW now. But she was in TNA. Oh no, she no. did shine with AEW. Well, we have to see what she does. Well, yeah, she had no. She had that opening feud with Tony Storm because they used to be besties, and then yeah. you haven't heard shit from her. Yeah, you know. But here's the thing with with Ricochet. In my opinion, with Ricochet, he went as far as he could in WWE. He's a, yeah. mul- he's a North American champion, tag team champion, Intercontinental champion, United States Championship. What more did you want from him? <laughs> like he's unfortunately, there's too many people above Ricochet for him to go for even the world title. Yeah, I just, I just don't. He doesn't connect. I don't know why. Yeah, I like, I like Ricochet a lot. He's super talented. Um, I like his look. Um, I, I think it's the promo. Really, I think it's the mic work. NXT. Yeah, his mic work and NXT wasn't that great either. But yeah, you, you, you got to be more than just acrobatics and good wrestling because he's a great seller. Oh he's my god, he's a fantastic worker. seller. Yeah. Like he's, but he he can't cut a promo. And can't, he can't carry a feud. It's not, yeah, I don't think it's because he can't cut a promo. I just don't think it's one of those things where like his promos aren't believable. Yeah. Like you know, by and large, Rick. When you look at like from a heighted perspective, like MJF and Ricochet are probably around the same height, right? But MJF is a great storyteller. Yeah. That's why MJF was where he's at. MJF was a good wrestler. He's a good worker, but what puts him over the top is a storytelling. Same thing with Punk. What put Punk's over the top is a storytelling. You look at Punk's ring work; it's okay. Like Punk's ring work has always been good. It's not yeah. anything that'll blow you away. You get invested in Punk because of the freaking story he's able to tell you. I don't like Punk for his wrestling. Exactly. You don't hear that. Exactly. You don't hear that very often. Like he Never. gets a mean bulldog. He does. <laughs> like, he does. You know what I mean, like. He's he's the it's the presentation. Yeah. I think Ricochet also kind of got screwed with the bad this bad booking. He never really was given a fair shot because when he was given yeah. that fair shot in NXT, he delivered. Remember that match and that feud with him and Velveteen Dream? Oh my god, that was amazing. Yeah, it was incredible. You know him <laughs> him him and Adam Cole. Mm-hmm. 
Like he he has that ability. He has it in him, but he needs a he needs a better dance partner on the on the microphone to carry him. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a big fish, small pond. Yeah, yeah. I mean, am I going to tune the Ricochet versus Osprey on an AEW television show? Yeah, why the hell not? It's going to be fun. I mean, if I were yeah. him, though, I'd stay. My wife's there. Yeah, the wife's the money maker at the or it's, I don't think they're officially married yet. Yeah, the fiance. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that is the true money maker. What I found interesting on Raw is that Ricochet got stretcher job and Samantha Irvin left. So mm-hmm. they really played it up. Yeah, of course. And then the best part about it is Pat McAfee became the ring announcer. That's even better. <laughs> he he announced um he announced Drew McIntyre in the Finn Balor main event. So Drew McIntyre comes out and he's like entering the entering the ring. This Scottish handsome psychopath son of a bitch, <laughs> there's something like that. And then he goes when when uh, Finn came out, he was like, "Now coming to the ring, representing bum ass Judgment Day with zero <laughs> with zero <laughs> with zero percent body fat on a two hundred and twenty five pound frame, Finn Balor." <laughs> <laughs> incredible (laughs) (laughs) i was like this is amazing absolutely amazing but yeah now we've seen the last of ricochet but listen ricochet had a great what six years six or so year run yeah six years yeah yeah, no because we we were at his debut match at the north american uh ladder match which is 2018 2024 he had a good six years yeah it'll be cool to see him in aw every now and then let him run the indies let him do let him do his crazy stuff let's see let's see what he does with it but I'll believe he leaves when I see it. Yeah, we'll we'll wait a couple of months um, to see what happens with that. But we'll see. Moving on now to what we're really here for to talk about is Clash at the Castle. The second ever Clash at the Castle emanating from Scotland uh, in the United Kingdom, which I think Clash at the Castle might be their unofficial UK pay-per-view every year at this point. <laughs> um, so... No, this is the second clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the second clash. Correct, yeah. Yeah, it's the second because that's when Solo debuted. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going from Scotland. It's gonna be uh at two PM on Saturday. So yes, afternoon wrestling. <laughs> this week. So it's gonna be a nice way to relax. <laughs> before you do stuff. <laughs> yeah, before uh we go out to dinner. For my my aunt turned seventy five this weekend. Oh wow! Congratulations. So yeah, so I'm driving up for father, that and Father's Day. Dude, so. that's gonna be shout, crazy shout because it's a strong possibility it's gonna be a sweep in the NBA Finals. So Boston might be extra. Oh crazy. Uh, yeah, that's too. We're also <laughs> gonna be watching the NBA NBA Finals. Yeah. So. If it makes it to at least five games, I think there's two games this two games this week, and then game five would be Saturday or something. Game five would be Saturday. Yeah. So I'm going up, I'm going up Thursday actually. So I'll be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, coming home Sunday. Yeah. By the time you get there, there you might be go might be in the middle of like championship parade traffic yeah dude my 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 mom and my her sister and my and my uncle huge celtics fans yeah massive celtics fans and they got to watch in the 70s with, oh wow uh, when they were when they would when them and the lakers were just running shop on the nba yeah jesus so yeah 70s so, 80s it'll yeah. be fun that'll be exciting my brother yeah. and my brother and my, his wife are being celtics fans too so yeah no it's gonna be a crazy fun. time so before all that happens you're gonna have clash of the castle uh which uh, was seemed to potentially be the the homecoming for Drew McIntyre. The he's, he's losing going, the the main of he was going to be the main event of the world title, and then Friday happens. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> when this yeah, match, this, that, no, this isn't the main event. It should be the main it, event. But I think it's going. going to be the main event. It's the I only, don't know. Well, do you have Drew kick off then? At this point, you have to. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think Drew should main event, personally. I think Drew should main event, too. But you're not putting an I Quit match as the first match on the card. True. Who do you fall that? Like, Dewdrop? Like, <laughs> yeah. Dewdrop and Bailey? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no way. As soon as this match got announced, Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles in an I Quit match for, for the WWE Championship, I go, wow. Drew must be so pissed yeah. at this. Drew has had the worst post-mania run of his entire career. This might be worse than one he won during the pandemic and no one was there. I know. <laughs> he was booked He was booked well, though, that for that run. He, that was, honestly, he was booked perfectly for that run and the pandemic happened. The, it was out of the, his control. The, 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 no, the, the Drew COVID run 
It's a great run. It's a fantastic run. Yeah. It's it's a it's a great run. Uh, he was put in an impossible situation to succeed, and he still did it. He tried. Like, he, he tried. He, he yeah. made the wrestling and the programs entertaining with literally nobody there. Not even faces on a screen. I think he dropped by then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like. Yeah. I, yeah, this I, might be worse. Yeah, this <laughs> might be worse. So we obviously we obviously know the story. AJ Styles pulled his best Mark Henry, much to the enjoyment of Mark Henry. And Kay and I talked about this on the show. If a wrestler comes out in a pastel suit, don't believe a word they say. Yeah, they're not retiring. It's a precedent at this point. Uh, that was it was good. It was good. <laughs> I mean, Mark Henry did it way better. Oh, Mark! I when it happened, I initially believed Mark Henry completely. Yeah. His thing, watching, watching it back, knowing it was fake, I still believed it was real. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. So AJ doing that little homage to him, I think, was really freaking awesome. Um, and he bullied his way to get Cody and Matt into an I Quit match um, at at Clash of the Castle. I Again, Cody's on a crazy run. Cody's, Cody's John cena right now. He's on a Cena yeah. run. Yeah. So realistically, this is going to be a fantastic match with AJ's losing. There's still good intrigue in this because AJ is the only person to win like the WWE championship outside of the United States in recent history. Last time he won, he beat Jinder Mahal in the United yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So AJ has a president of doing shock victories. AJ also won the U.S. title at a Madison Square Garden house show. He did. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah did. he did. You know, so AJ has this, has this kind of aura about him of just pulling shit out of his ass. And winning. I like the I quit, but I want something more from this. And it's only because the TNA involvement and TNA's turning 20. <laughs> you know, I think this what month. Else, what else do you have in mind? Because personally, I couldn't think of a different stipulation for this. Loser leaves. Like, like he like he Cody oh, beats AJ and, and like mm. and like AJ leaves WWE. He shows up in TNA and that does a little mini run and then comes back. God, I mean, they probably didn't give him enough money to go and do that. <laughs> Honestly, I would not be surprised if AJ was just like, I'm not going back to TNA. I'm not doing I'm it. John. <laughs> like, he doesn't have fond memories of that place. That'd be, that'd be like, Rick, just go back to WCW. <laughs> Fair. Just, 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 just six months. No, Dixie Carter's not there. Just, just, just go. <laughs> No, the Smashing Pumpkins guy isn't there either. <laughs> Who is there? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> it might be Santino. <laughs> I think Santino Santino? is involved in some way, shape, Can or form. Can you work with Santino, AJ? Come on. It's, he, <laughs> no, there's no Cobra. No Cobra. <laughs> Just go. Go work with Santino. <laughs> yes, yes, he's Canadian. It's very confusing. <laughs> so is Jinder. <laughs> so is Jinder. Jinder's a Canadian. As we, I think we called him a Canadian years ago. See, AJ, you got, you got, you got, you got, uh, you got experience with confused Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we ever? Don't we ever? Uh, but yeah, I mean, the I quit's going to be great. These are two good, like their match at Backlash was, lack of a better word, phenomenal. It's a really yeah, good great. wrestling match. Really good yeah. wrestling match with a predictable outcome, but a really good wrestling match. I can only assume what they do with the stipulation here, but by and large, Cody's with Cody literally just donated a wrestling ring uh, to uh, the African wrestling uh, promotion where they like they wrestle in like the mud. Yeah, Cody literally today just said he's donating a wrestling ring to them. Hell yeah, I love Cody Rhodes. Great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Co- thing, I I still don't know why Ricky, but this whole if he did this in AEW, would be like. Pfft. Politician. <laughs> He's starting to run for Congress. You know what I mean? Like, but in we, WWE, that was like, a real thing for a while too. Yeah, yeah. But in, when he does it in WWE, you and I literally just went, "Wow, what a guy! What, a, what a man! What an amazing like, I individual!" I, 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 I just want to call point to our hypocrisy, and I don't know why I have it, but I'm admitting I have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I was, I was not the biggest Cody fan in, uh, in AEW. I was None like, what of are you us doing? were. None what of us were. Doing, Cody? Why are you leaving your boots in the ring? What are you doing? <laughs> why are you why bleeding? Why are you going for the world title? This. Why are you such like a captain sissy? <laughs> why are you taking? Why are you taking unprotected shots to the head? You're an why executive. Are you bleeding? <laughs> yeah. Why are you bleeding again? <laughs> but in WWE, he bleeds and we're like fucking awesome storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> What a guy! What a guy! I don't get it. I don't get it. I if he don't... took it, if he took a chair shot to the head, the back of the head, we'd be like greatest match ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
spot we'll be talking about 15 years from now. I, I I don't get it. I, I part don't of me get it. hates being a Cody Mark because I'm like, wow, <laughs> such a hypocrite. <laughs> I I don't get it. You know the you know what it is for me too because like I feel like Cody just I think he talked about it on the on the Stone Cold podcast where he was like I decided I can't be an executive and I just need to be a wrestler. Yeah. That might be the difference because honestly because he was doing honestly the executive it's like yeah you're trying to go corporate on us we don't like corporate fuck yeah. you yeah he was like this kind of sucks <laughs> also <laughs> do you know what's on Smackdown he allowed what? himself to be seen on TV not wearing a suit oh yeah that's when yeah that's when he's like really angry yeah I honestly <laughs> that was a small detail that was actually really good because Cody makes a point like every time I'm on TV I want to well dressed yeah in a suit and he made a point to just go no fuck this cut tank he's done it he's Gym done tank. it like two or three times when this feud with Roman I think yeah yeah you know but it, it is it's a, a good, good it's a good detailed switch for for him as well to show it like I'm really mad <laughs> you know I didn't have time to put on a suit but yeah Cody's winning this this is gonna be a great men event but Cody's winning uh Moving on to what probably was going to be the main event until five days ago, <laughs> Drew McIntyre in his home country of Scotland will not main event. He's going up against Damian Priest for the WWE World Championship because uh, Drew beat Finn on Raw this past week. Uh, Judgment Day will not be uh, ringside or involved in the match at all again with Damian Priest. The Good, world because that means CM Punk will. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judgment Day has a bunch of problems trying to keep Dom in check uh, with Liv Morgan, and I know that he's actually married in real life. But I saw the way Liv was acting, especially on Raw. I was like, dude, no one's gonna blame you. I know. <laughs> I mean, it, it would it would make me feel better. I don't know why I'm even gonna say this. If if I won't find out. <laughs> that's what i'd be like oh god <laughs> now now i wouldn't blame you <laughs> oh my god yeah no they have a lot of issues with that but i i love Liv kind of being like a crazy vixen and dom just not being able to resist without finn balor there i like the story mm-hmm it is. It it is. It does. T- it is a little hard to get into it though, knowing she's married, knowing he's made like just got married. Literally just got married. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's acting. But it's WWE is that weird middle ground. It's like okay, but it's like reality acting. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's, it's, it's a weird it's just thing. It's a weird hybrid between like we know a lot about these people in real life though. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're gonna get we're gonna get back to this match. But did you see there was a segment on uh, with Judgment Day? So Liv kind of dropped her hotel key card or whatever to to Dom, and so. Judgment Day comes back, and Dom's like, guys, I got to be honest. Carlito's with them, too, by the way. He's, he's like, guys, I got to be honest. Like, Liv gave me, Liv, Liv was here, and she gave me this, the credit, the credit card. And they're like, oh, and Carlito's like, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Finn Balor's like, it's not cool. It's like, oh, 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 it's not cool. <laughs> I, I saw a meme today. It was like, it was Carl. It was a, a picture. I forget who the picture was, but it was the p- caption was Carlito and uh, Dom leaving Liv's hotel room. <laughs> oh, I, forget yeah. pop, I forget who the pop culture people were. It was Brian I, Maddox and Xavier Woods. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Brad Maddox. Was, sorry. Brad, Brad Maddox, Maddox and Xavier Woods. <laughs> and I was like, this, <laughs> this is fucking funny. <laughs> I saw a tweet that, uh, I think it's from Creative Humor. It was like, let's get this straight, folks. Dominic oh, Mysterio. Fretz, Fretz put it in the, in the Discord. He did put it in the Discord chat, it. yeah. That was w Creative Humor put a tweet that said, let's get this straight, folks. Dominic Mysterio decided to go and try to beat up his deadbeat father instead of going to a hotel to have sex with Liv Morgan. We're pretty sure that's a precursor. of C- That's a sign of CTE. <laughs> it's a sign of CTE? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I, I just love how messy this scenario has gone. But back to this match. So there is a Drew McIntyre trying in his hometown. This is all he's ever wanted in his life to be recognized in his hometown as a world champion for WWE. He had it for like five minutes and 46 seconds before he got before he decided to like catwalk the punk and get his ass beat and get cast in on by Priest. And CM Punk haunts this man the entire, entire time. So does Mormon like I'm gonna go with you because that is one of our bonus questions. Do we get a CM Punk appearance? Yes, to foil of Drew, and I believe we do. Yeah, get a CM, CM Punk. CM appearance. Punk's probably really close to being back, and literally because the the whole the whole story is 
this how can we piss Drew off even more? <laughs> That's literally the story of this this guy's career right now. How can we just piss him off? Yeah. So he's lured into the false security of okay, it's me and him one on one, no outside interference. And it's like, well, technically, CM Punk's not part of Judgment Day. It's the one thing he didn't account for, and it costs him. Yep, it's the uh, it's the bug Bugs Bunny. Yeah, Bugs Bunny thing. It's the story really is. Drew, why are you mad at us? This is your fault. Yeah, like, pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty that much what it is. That just him off even more. Yeah, I had a theory that Drew McIntyre might, um, might like hire Gallus to help him out, because Gallus being from the UK and yeah. them being in NXT, I was like, oh, that'd be a good turn. Drew actually takes the takes the low ball route and gets Gallus to interfere on his behalf. But in that essence, that still might screw over Drew because you might end up getting disqualified, so you get, like, a no contest. Yeah, you can't have that. Yeah. So you're looking for something definitive. Yeah, dude. I mean, I don't think uh, Tyson Fury singing American Pie would help that situation again. <laughs> so. Wouldn't be surprised if Tyson Fury shows up. No kidding. <laughs> he's got nothing else if, to if, do. If his face is healed. I was going to say, he's got nothing else to do <laughs> right now. Yeah, his boxing career is, eh. Yeah, so by hook or by crook, I think Damian Priest actually wins this. I do too, but it is a thing. I do like I Priest's run so far. It's, I don't. It's, yeah? it's, it's, it's not working for me. You know it, what it is? I, it's the I Judgment Day baggage. Not even, yes, a little bit. Like, it's almost like it's not his fault because of the booking, but there's mm-hmm. just other things on Raw that are more interesting than Damian Priest. Agreed. Even within his own faction. Yes, specifically within his own faction. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, like, a lot of what's going on with Judgment Day is leading towards Rhea's return. I think Rhea's a lot healthier than people are giving her credit for. Like I would, ex- I, I maybe expect the injury. Re- what, the injury wasn't as bad as you th- as as bad as I thought. Yeah, I expect the post SummerSlam appearance for, by Rhea Ripley, if not uh, it's, at it's SummerSlam. It's possible because this was definitely going to be the plan all along, except Liv yeah. was going to be in chase. So you got to use Dom to get into head of Rhea and eventually take that title off of her. So they're yeah. still doing the same story, just a little bit different. Yeah, it's a different scenario, but it's the same yeah. story. Yeah. So that's the thing with Priest. But, like, they're trying with Priest. Priest was at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. He took pictures with people. He had the belt and stuff. So he's he's being a good representative in a time. And, like, if Priest somehow makes the SummerSlam and loses to Drew or Punk or something, I'm fine with that. Give him a good run as a world title. Move on. Especially if Rhea returns. Yeah. Then we'll see what happens. But for right yeah, now, this, Priest this, is... This title run is isn't, it's just... It's not his fault. It's, it's not working. You can't... Like you, like you said, dude... This whole segment, we haven't talked about him that much. And yeah. like you also said, he's not main eventing when the other guy is literally the hometown hero of a different country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is kind of sad the same thing happened with Bad Bunny because we said he should have main evented with Bad Bunny too. The Bad Bunny match should have been the should have been the main yeah. event of Backlash. That yeah, made no absolutely. sense whatsoever. So he's <laughs> playing second fiddle to uh, Cody Rhodes twice, then Brock Lesnar. So I, I would, that was yeah. a little more understandable. Yeah. But – I was like, when like, Cody, when they did the Cody thing, I was like, ooh, I was like, this kind of sucks for Drew. I, like, I, I, I also <laughs> think this is, that's another reason why this should main event, because you got you to gotta put over this Damian Priest title run. True, but then where do you put the I quit match? Put I in the middle of the car? Just, just kick it off. Ah, that's, oh man, I don't know, to kick off with an I quit, that's a bold move. When it's the only real stipulation match that you have, it's the only gimmick you have on this car. Yeah. Yeah, well, the gimmick is Drew's homecoming. That's also a gimmick. That's true. There's going to be a lot of bagpipes. Yeah, right? Like, that, that's what the Piper Niven, Piper Niven's story is, hey, we're fighting in my country. Let's book me good for, like, a month so I can get a title shot. Listen, Piper's fine because she has Chelsea, and Chelsea Green's hysterical. Yeah, she is. <laughs> yeah, she is. I'm not saying it's a bad build. Yeah. I'm saying, but, but the fact that she's a hometown hero is part of the gimmick. Do you remember? Part, part, yeah, actually, we'll talk about it more when Piper Niven shows up. Piper Niven might be the... The middle match. Piper and Bailey might be the middle match. We'll see what happens. Excuse me. But yeah, Damien's winning this by and large because yeah, we just I agree. angrier Drew is the best Drew. Um speaking of angry and kind of really a weird feud, which is in Sami Zayn, the Intercontinental Champion, is out here trying to save people yet again. And Sami Zayn tried to save 
uh, Jay. And Captain now, Save a Bro. Captain Save a Bro, Sami Zayn. Yeah, he's out here trying to save all the bros and the and the and the dudettes because Maxine's there as well of of Alpha Academy. And we've got, from what I know, uh, right now, straight up match, IC title match again, Sammy versus Chad Gable. And I'm on the fence right now whether Sammy drops or keeps this. Where are you at? Uh, Sammy drops. You think so? Yeah, I think, I think, I don't, I there was rumors that Chad Gable's leaving. Yeah, I don't. No I way, don't no so. way in hell. Because uh, where would where would he go? He probably would go to TNA and then end up back in NXT. Like, why would you do that? So um, it's about to happen think, to Dolph Ziggler. But Chad's Chad's contract expired last week. He agreed to an extension for Clash of the Castle, allegedly. Um, I'm saying allegedly. For, I think he signed a new contract, and I think he's wearing the title title belt. Um, I think WWE wants him to stay, especially since he's getting this new push. Like, it's not like Ricochet where it's like you weren't really getting booked well anyway. Chad Gable is being booked well he is primed to get a brand new faction why would he just give that up i don't believe the internet when they were saying they think he's leaving i didn't believe it one bit either i was like he's he's in a storyline he's in a really good storyline right now and give him that title because i want to see him with it and push this story along Sami Zayn does nothing for me with the belt Sami Zayn is way better in the chase and once he gets it's kind of like all right let's do the next thing now yeah i mean we've never seen chad gable with a single championship run and I don't know why Sammy, Sammy is just a bad champion. He he's he's the ultimate underdog. I think that's why. Yeah. You know, and then like after that, like, let's be honest, none of us thought Sammy was beating Gunther at Mania. Yeah. You 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 think with Sammy Zayn is you you blow your load with the win. It was a hell of a win though. I'm not gonna it, lie yeah, that. It's it was a, a hell, hell of a load, win. don't get me wrong. Yeah. It was a it was hell of a <laughs> Yeah, it was a hell of a win. But I, I want to see Chad because, like, you have Chad being a quintessential narcissist person and abusive. Like, he almost whipped somebody on national TV. That was great. <laughs> you know, he almost whipped a woman too. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 like he's like a he's like two steps away from a kiss my ass club. Yeah, he's he's that club. And so you're you're kind of seeing how how big the line is. And now, if you give him the title, um. And you haven't run with the title. Let's see how diabolical he gets now that he got what he wanted. Dude, they what? should do the Kiss My Ass Club. Like, if you're going to do a Otis Turns on Gable segment. <laughs> Not or yet. Tazawa, or Tazawa, you do the Kiss My Ass Club when he goes down instead of kissing him, he gives him a low blow. Nice. I do like, like that. Yeah, because obviously you're not gonna have him kiss his ass. You, if you really want to do it, you don't have to even expose his ass. You know, it's a like Kiss My Ass on the pants. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, then he does a low blow. Yeah, you know what it is too. Uh, did, I don't know. Uh, Otis cut a promo uh, with Sami Zayn uh, in the backstage there, and he was like, "Oh, I love Otis." He was like, "Sammy, you know, way back when I had everything. You know, I, I had a good. He's like, I had, I had my friends, I had my peach, <laughs> <laughs> I had Tucky. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he had Tucky. Oh yeah. And then I lost everything, and then Chad was there for me." For everything, I was like, "Wow, we got we got a Mandy Rose reference," which I will admit, Mandy and Otis storyline was one of the most entertaining wrestling stupid storylines ever. It was a great pandemic storyline. <laughs> no, it was it was pre pandemic. Was it pre pandemic? It was pre pandemic because um, no, Otis Otis won the uh, Money in the Bank and on the Titan Tower. But was Mandy with them then? Yeah, because there's Money in the Bank. No, was like, did did they drop that? Did they drop that af- before Money in the Bank? It was it was after because they remember he had Money in the Bank and it was like the Miz Miz ended up against Money in the Bank. Yeah, Miz beat him for Money in the Bank or something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, Miz and Maurice were in in the promo with uh, Otis and Mandy. I'm pretty sure it was on SmackDown. I I, I honestly don't remember because I remember when they they fired the female writer who came up with Mandy and Otis being a couple. I don't know when the story was, but I remember during the rumble when Mandy almost got eliminated, Otis was under the ring and caught her. Otis caught her. Yeah, but I don't know what year that was. Uh, someone asked I want to say tw- I want to say 2019. We're not going to act Slack. I don't even know if Slack's still here. Slack, are you still here? You thought it was you thought it was 19? I think it was 2019. I thought it was I could have sworn it was 20, but you might be right. I I I'm just literally like trying to figure it out. Because I don't, I honestly don't remember when it was. But be that as a man, as we're looking it up, I think you've convinced me on Chad Gable winning because you have Chad winning. You haven't be a tyrant 
and going into the going into the fall and during the summer and at some point you make the switch out for like the new alpha academy which is going to be the creed brothers yeah and potentially ivy nile yeah so i think that's a good little switcheroo so i'm gonna go with chad gable uh with you just as well a couple more matches on this card they're probably a little bit more predictable than what we have uh barely Pamela Martinez finally making an appearance in New York City. Uh, will go up against Piper Niven, obviously Chelsea Green by her side, uh, and Piper Niven's uh, home country of the United Kingdom and Scotland. Uh, it's going to be an interesting match. I think again, this is still predictable. I think Bailey still retains. Yeah. At this point, uh, but I enjoy, I enjoy them giving Piper Niven a chance. And to be honest with you, Piper Niven's been like a lot of the four horsewomen. Or giving them really good matches. And Let's so, say, who is she beating? I can't think of one. Oh, she's what, of the Four Horsewomen? Yeah. I want to say she beats Sasha. She's gone up with Bailey. But this is a classic, like, the last time Bailey was in, like, the UK and had a and had a championship title match, she went up against Nia Jax. So Bailey versus, like, a woman bigger than her is a, is a total UK Bailey thing. We're definitely going to get the Hey Bailey chance. Obviously. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm really excited for the Scottish crowd. Yeah, dude, they gotta <laughs> beat France. Like, if you lose to France, that's just embarrassing. <laughs> that's probably what's gonna happen. I, um, I loved, I loved that French crowd. It was awesome, but I, I, it's French people. You guys are just the worst. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're not too bad. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I have no desire to go to Paris or France. It has a bit of a stench to it. Paris is, I will admit, I've been to Paris. They're, they're a little uppity. Yeah, they don't like us. That's fine. I don't like them either. Most people don't like us. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to like us. Most people don't like us. You'll you'll get used to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I like where this is going. It gives Bailey something to do now, but she's totally separate from damage control. Bailey's been making more headlines, juggling on Twitter than she has doing anything else. So it gives like, Bailey something to do. It gives Piper nip in the match, and I'm sure Bailey is going to sell. Uh, really good for Piper. I do not expect Piper at all to win. I expect Chelsea Green to do something totally ridiculous because Chelsea Green is a ridiculous character um, in this whole thing. Probably Naomi will get involved on behalf of Bailey. She'll be feeling a little bit of a glow. But I think Bailey 100% here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Moving on here as we, as we move on this show. Uh, the final match, uh, the Bianca and Jade Cargill showcase match, as we will be calling it. Yep. <laughs> doing a tag team triple threat against Shayna, who just lost to uh, Lola Vice, and then XT and Zoe Stark. Also against fucking Finally, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn are actually going to wrestle on a main roster show since being out, since being out pretty much since they've been drafted almost like 18 or so months ago. Um, obviously, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn were from NXT UK originally, so this is kind of a homecoming for them as well. But by and large, folks, this is a Bianca and Jade showcase match. Yep. They are going to be dominant. They are going to be fantastic. They are so much fun together. Like they have, I don't know if they, why, they, how they keep on managing to do matching outfits for every event. Have you seen this? Yeah, they they, they look good. They look. They look uh, good. I think Bianca's probably making all of their clothes. Most definitely, because that's what that's just what she does. Uh, they yeah. have good chemistry together. It is weird seeing Jade just not be like a stoic badass. That's what we're so used to her as. Oh, that's that's what that is. What's going to make her turn that much better? Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. They're going to be so good besties that she's going to. I want her. Ideally, I want Jade when Jade turns. I want her to do the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn spot. From I NXT. want her to beat up Montez Ford. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Montez would be down because you know Montez would sell that like crazy. Oh, yeah. He would sell the fuck out of her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be great. That's why I want to see it happen. <laughs> Monza would sell so so well he'd oversell too much. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But no, I I would love that. But I, I wanna see I, I wanna see Jade kind of take like Bianca's head and like smash it up against the ramp as they're walking away. Or do like a Tommaso and Tommaso and Johnny, Cho- and Johnny yeah. moment from like Chicago. Like her turn needs to be so brutal on Bianca. Yeah, I like it's gonna be fun. Like I kind of want to like fast forward six months and to when the turn happens. So when things like this, overall <laughs> things just get good. 
Yeah. Well, this like, is- oh, Cody might drop. Ooh, I think <laughs> Bailey might drop. You know, actually, I think it's time to like, turn happens. Like, WWE is in a holding pattern of we're waiting for things to happen. And Money in the Bank, I think, is going to start that turning of things might happen. Money in the Bank usually does. Yeah. Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank is the real reset of the WWE season. Yeah, because you're gonna Money in the Bank, and you're gonna jettison all the SummerSlam. Yeah, and, yeah. You, you and WWE all that. like after Mania is kind of in cruise control in terms of creative. Yeah. So and, and so to make up for that, they just go. Oh, let's gonna go overseas and make cruise control exciting. Yeah, pretty much. It's That's actually it's really like. smart. It's fucking so smart. Yeah, everything is a WrestleMania level event now with all these international shows. Yeah, and they don't care if it's how predictable it is. They're just happy to be there. Exactly, it's and it makes your it just it just just a presentation of your product is just like oh no, we're a hot, it's it's hot. Yeah, you make your product that much better. It's, yeah, yeah. I, it's I, financially I, hot. It's creatively cold. Yeah, and I I dare when this turn happens. Like I've been wanting because you know everybody knows Bianca's ponytail is a hair clip. Yeah, you know it, it's a giant hair. Clip. Oh, Jade rips it off. Yeah, I want like at at some look at some point for a, like a really legit Bianca character change. She can still be a character change in a baby face. It'd be interesting to, interesting to see a heel mess with the hair in the yeah. way that like it permanently goes away. And there's always like the old ad is like you never mess with a black woman and her hair, but like that's what makes it intriguing. Yeah, you know, especially if it's another African American woman doing it. Yeah, as well. I I don't know. Like it would know, be an I, intriguing I'm, take for that to if they went that route. I personally don't like the lose the hair character change because it's mm-hmm. it's it's like it's like Hulk Hogan not being orange. <laughs> I mean, like it's part of the gimmick. Yeah, it's part I of the gimmick. It. Or like Stone Cold is like, you know, we're gonna move away from the black trunks. It is so iconic with who she is. Mm-hmm. And it sells really well. That's very and true. And it's, it's so unique compared to anything else anyone has ever done in wrestling. And that is very rare to find these days. That something is so different. Yeah. In character defining. Because other than, if, if, other than that, like a cosmetic change really isn't that much of a character change. Yeah. Unless it's a complete revamp, like when what's her name cut her, buzzed her head for the straight edge society. Molly, oh, you mean uh, Serena Deep? Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Deep, yeah. Yeah. So I don't think that because if you take away Bianca's hair, she's still the same character. Yeah. Like, what do you really change other than she has never hair anymore? But I think that's also the reason because it's so synonymous with her that exactly. it's, that it's like if she what is she without it? You know, is she even recognizable? I think it's better to do it when she if she ever turned heel like Bailey did with her Bailey buddies. <laughs> that was that was the Fox debut too. I remember that. Yeah, right. Like that. <laughs> that was that is an iconic moment because she's just like, I'm never going back to this. Yeah. And all those grown men are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like we we all wanted emo Bailey, but we wanted you to go back eventually. And she's yeah. just like, I'm never going back. Yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. And I respect that, but I'm upset. <laughs> I definitely thought we might have gotten Hugger Bailey at a uh, at Mania. I would love to see Hugger Bailey, but I respect her for not having Hugger Hugger Bailey. Yeah, we almost had Paramore. Good. We, we almost got we almost got Paramore at WrestleMania this past year. Yeah, that would have been really cool. On top of all the other musical guests that they got, <laughs> like Paramore was going to do Bailey's entrance, but they couldn't cut. They couldn't figure it out in time. But anyway, yeah, Bianca and Jade's winning this. Completely, wholeheartedly, Bianca and Jade's winning this. Dude, um, I saw like I saw like like a Bloomberg article. Well, it wasn't Bloomberg, but it was some like outlet article. It was just like, um, here's everything you need to know about Taylor Swift's opening act. In quotes, Paramore. And I was just like, what? I was just like, <laughs> I was like, how do people not know who Paramore is? <laughs> wow, that's an insult. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was like an Instagram meme. It was just like, I feel so offended. It was like a, a quote tweet. It was like, I feel yeah. so offended right now. I feel offended too. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, you know the. <laughs> like, that, that's Paramore. That's Paramore. Yeah, Paramore's freaking great. You've been around forever. <laughs> Twenty years. Yeah. Like, have you heard of this new up and coming band, Paramore? <laughs> <laughs> They're really hip with the kids. <laughs> yeah, and adults apparently. And adults. <laughs> oh my god! But Clash of the Castle coming up this uh, this Saturday, two p.m. Eastern time uh, from from Scotland, from the UK. Uh, so we have a couple of bonus questions uh, that we didn't get to. I totally forgot. Do we get? Does Chad Gable? Um, Bring the Alpha Academy to help him beat Sammy. Mm. You know what they do? Because yeah. here's here's why. 
They come out, they help him win. They they tease the heel turn with those three. Yeah. They help him win. On Monday, he goes, I don't give a fuck. You're fired anyway. And then comes down the other guys. Oh, so you're telling me he's going to pull. He's you do a double pull, swerve. Well, no, he's going to pull an Austin Theory at Evolve. Yes. Remember, exactly. he was he yes. had hired um Gigi Dolan, aka Priscilla, Gigi Dolan, Ke- and then Priscilla she helped, Kelly. She, she helped him win. And he was like, Get I got the, the title. Out of here. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> yeah. I, and he's like, now that I'm, now that I'm, I, I need to be a higher tier. I need some top tier <laughs> talent here. Yeah. If we can steal a Will Tarashuk phrase. Yeah. Um, and he brings out the Creed brothers. Cause and it's like, now, yeah. It's a good swerve because you're like, oh, they're gonna turn Otis and everyone else heel. Okay, weird. And then nope, you swerve them again. Yeah, it's a good abandonment. Good abandonment. And then you exactly. continue the story with Sammy, Otis, and Tazawa against the Creed brothers and. Uh, yeah. What's his name? And that, that builds into SummerSlam. You can be Sammy and Gable at SummerSlam. There you go. Like, I think I think that that's what I would do. So Triple H, if you're listening, take it. Yeah, he, <laughs> he might be listening. Uh, okay, the last bonus question, since this is the UK, and I'm pulling this one. Um, I'm pulling this, this rabbit out the hat here. Since the UK, do we get an actual TV appearance in some way, shape, or form of Sir William Regal? No, he's English. It's still the UK. Yeah, but don't the Scots and the English hate each other? Yeah, they do. So, what, are they going to boo him? That'd be really funny if they but it's him. But it's William Regal. I know, but... Ah, the warden's here. What's going on, Matt Ritter? How you doing, man? You know, you know what they should do? They should have a uh, a live camera at the grave of Roddy Piper, and they just show it every now and then. <laughs> and here's Roddy Piper. I wouldn't be surprised if Drew McIntyre comes out in some Piper gear. Piper's music. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't the be surprised. Music and jacket. He, like, he calls, hey, Ronda, I need that Piper jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, FedEx is fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was. <laughs> I mean <laughs> it could work. <laughs> it could work. Oh man. That's true. That's right. He was Canadian. That's right. Piper was Canadian. I followed. It's so whatever. It worked. Cause like Piper used to be uh, homeless on the streets of Toronto. Wait, Piper's Canadian too? Yeah. What the fuck? Why are so many why are so many foreign characters Canadian? <laughs> why do wait till I tell you about the X-Men? <laughs> um so there there's that too. The original X Men animated series characters were all Canadian. Were all Canadian. The uh, voice actors. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, the studio, the studio that they did the the, the show in is in Toronto, which is kind of a great thing. Yeah, Canada's kind of a cool place these days. Uh be it as it may, that's pretty much the end of our show. Uh, but we do have some news that might concern some of you, if not all of you. For the first time in over eighteen months, folks, we are going to open our own forbidden door or prohibited portal as we preview Forbidden Door as well. So this has been on our mind at least a couple of times uh, throughout the past 18 months, and then all the time we always forget about it. However, we have finally come to a consensus and an agreement that we are going to have a special guest host for our Forbidden Door preview show uh, in a couple of weeks, or maybe yeah, in a couple of weeks, not next week, but I think two weeks from now. We're gonna make this. We're gonna make this announcement right now. Oh, um, yeah, I need to. I I need to put. Yeah, I need to write it down or something. But yeah, our Forbidden Door preview show, when it does occur, is going to be. Uh, going to be. We're gonna be joined by Slack. He's the only one that's excited. Um, so, so Slack is going to be joining us for the first time in over in over eighteen months. We're opening up our own prohibited portal, and Slack is going to be with us. So, bring your hate, <laughs> bring your animosity, and somebody get Mister Slack on the phone because we're probably going to need him at some point during the show. Do I forget Slack's first name? For some reason, I think it's Anthony, but I it's, know it's not Anthony. It's Michael, I believe. It's Michael? Okay. It's Michael, yeah. It's Mike Slack. I'm not going to lie. I, I actually enjoy Every now and then, I'll be scrolling through Facebook, yeah. and uh, I'll see a meme from Slack, and I go, okay, that's pretty funny. And I like it. <laughs> so every now and then, Slack gets me. He knows right where my funny bone is. 
Yeah, so he's uh, and honestly, we we might need Slack because he's probably more knowledgeable about AEW than any of oh, us. Oh, most most definitely. Yeah, so we're we're definitely gonna Slack is gonna return uh, unless Wait, we change our minds. Since, since it's Forbidden Door, so our show's gonna be called Prohibited Portal. I've already named a Prohibited Portal. No, that's perfect. Slack. But since yeah. it's for, Forbidden Door, can we fit a second guest who knows New Japan? Like who? Doesn't doesn't Mister YLP only watch New Japan? That's true, because Dominion was the other day. Yeah, so we if, can it's two. if we can have two. Honestly, I want to see Slack and yeah. Mr. YLP go at it. Honestly, they can argue <laughs> and Ricky, we just moderate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, Mr. YLP, if you're out there listening to this, hit us up, because I think that's a really good idea. If you know a lot about uh, New Japan and Slack knows a lot about uh, AEW, and Ricky and I don't really know much about either, but we can make fun of all y'all. Yeah. Uh, I think we should do that. That sounds fun. Yeah, and then we can have Kane. It could be, be a loaded show. Yeah. I like the loaded. idea. Yeah. If we're talking about portals. Yeah, we're, we're going to open up all the portals. The return of Wrestler's Court this is not Wrestler's Court at all. Although we should put Slack in Wrestler's Court. That would be hysterical. Wait, why? What do you do? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> just just for enough. existing. That's why, he's, that's why he's arrested? Because he didn't do anything? <laughs> he didn't do anything, yeah. For crimes against his internship. Doing he, absolutely nothing. He never did his court order community service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe we will do that. We'll open the prohibited portal to Slack and Mr. YLP. That'd be an that'd be an interesting time. Yeah, we can get on the phone with that. And uh and and figure it out. So yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Well, we know Slack is definitely gonna be there, so take that as it may. And like Slack already knows Will and myself are released of his problems. He still also has to deal with K. Yes. <laughs> and that is where the fun happens. <laughs> Somehow Slack is going to throw out his back. Yeah. Slack might reach through his screen to try to punch Freckles. You know how much Slack hates that damn puppet? puppet the red I, stuffed animal? I, I want to know more. <laughs> so upset. He's always been upset about Freckles. I don't know why. It's, it's, I, it is I, pretty I funny. It is a circle. So that maybe, makes, Freckles, maybe Freckles is too colorful. <laughs> I guess. I think it's a more. I think it's because he Maddie got replaced by a stuffed animal. I mean, by an inanimate yeah. object. <laughs> wait, until, wait until his job gets replaced by AI. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Woo, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> I hope the AI replaces him, and I hope the AI that replaces him is named Freckles. Oh my God! Rick, you want to develop a Freckles AI? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Go Habsies. Go Habsies on a Freckles AI. I want the same picture of the animal too. Like, <laughs> just change the colors so we don't get copyrighted. Exactly. Exactly. It's from Animal Crossing, right? Yes. And Nintendo is known for suing fucking everybody. <laughs> Oh, we got to talk about games. There's a lot of good Xbox news lately. Uh, but we can do that all on the post because I know we got to talk about baseball and all the record chains and stuff like that. So that being said, uh, sir, Will, let's get the show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 379, Castle Cook. And we are cooking towards Clash at the Castle this week, and which means that WWE is cooking to a major, major event known as Money in the Bank, now a part of the Big Five in the WWE calendar. I am the big number one numero uno here of this podcast, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages. Is Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us a five star review. Links to all of that stuff are in the description below. If you are listening to us on Wrestle Addict Radio, what you should be doing, the cure for the con wrestling podcast, follow Wrestle Addict Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Addict Radio everywhere else in the social media world. Will Tarashock. Slays and germs. Uh, I did not get Joy Chestnut banned, but I could if I would. <laughs> I just had one question. Does that mean Kobayashi is coming out of retirement to reclaim his crown as the number one eating champion of the world? Honestly, I don't know. that's what Fourth I of, would do. I would be Fourth I would July be that asshole. Like three weeks, so yeah, we're going to find out. I'm excited. 
Yeah, it is. So, so now that I mean, I would if I was Kobayashi, I'd do that. But when we come back next week, folks, uh, we're going to review Clash of the Castle. We're going to start preparing for Money in the Bank. We're going to prepare to open up the prohibited portal with one or maybe two special guests, and uh, hopefully, Case back is gotten you know put back together or something so until next week folks goodbye good night we'll see you soon and i can't wait to say the sewer space again fuck you slack see you later folks this has been a wrestle attic radio branded podcast